Hi everyone, so today I am here with a video for you and I'm going to be talking about how Stefan and I were able to afford a wedding and also buy a house. Ever since we got engaged, um, I've gotten questions asking how we were able to afford it, what we were doing, what our budget was, stuff like that. And so, um, and now that we bought a house, I've been getting the same kind of questions like how we were able to afford it, furnish it, all that stuff. So. Um, I figured I would share our experience with you and hopefully it may help you out. Um, I feel like we didn't really do anything too crazy, but I'll just go ahead and share my experience with you anyway. Um, and since it's both about like saving money and since both things are happening at the same time in our life, it just makes sense to do it together because it kind of goes together. So anyway, um, I'll just go ahead and start. Stefan and I are very fortunate with the parents that we have. Um, our parents did not pay for the whole wedding. I have four siblings and my dad um, works his job full time and my mom is a stay at home mom. So um, there's just no way that my dad would be able to pay for all of our college weddings, all that kind of stuff. So, um, but he, ever since we were little, he's put money away for us into an account um, to help out with our future once we, you know, graduated college or whatever. So um, fortunately, my dad did that for me. That helped a lot with any real large amount of money that we had to just drop at any given moment. So um, we used that to help pay for the caterer for the wedding. Um, and we also used it to help pay for the tent because those were probably our two biggest expenses besides the photographer, which Stefan and I paid for on our own with our own savings. Um, and then also, we use that account to help pay for a down payment and to pay for closing costs. Um, it just was nice to have like a chunk of money put away um, so that we could be able to write a check at one time to get you know that large amount of money out there um, when it needed to be. So that definitely helped and I'm very, very lucky and so blessed to have that that my father did for me um, since I was little. So um, some people might not have that kind of thing. Some people might have their parents paying for their wedding, I'm not sure, but um, our parents definitely helped pay for the wedding. They kind of, um, you know, gave us an amount that they would help or said like, we'll pay for this, we'll pay for that. And I think that our parents were both very willing to help out with the wedding because um, even though they both couldn't, you know, just pay for the whole thing, um, they were really proud of us for doing things the way that we did. And so I think that that helped them really want to help us. In 2011, the summer of 2011, Stefan and I decided to um, open a joint bank account together. Um, we weren't engaged yet summer before we got engaged but we were very serious about our future together and there really wasn't a doubt that we would not end up together so it wasn't really scary like having a joint bank account and um, basically whenever we would make um, steady amounts of money we would put each of us would put like the same amount into the account um, so that it just kept growing continually and then like in the winter when I wasn't working and his hours were cut way back um, we would just not touch it we wouldn't spend any of the money and we wouldn't be putting anything in but we still were trying to like grow that and keep it in there and have it for the future um, so that helped also once we got um, started with wedding planning because we had started saving already and so then we continued to put money in to help pay for the wedding and that was basically like we just used that account to pay for um, wedding things and so yeah any amount of money that we put in it was specifically for the wedding and so it kind of helped because we didn't have to really use our own personal accounts um, at any time to pay for the wedding so that was nice too because we had our joint account so there was never any like arguments about paying um, stuff like that so that I think was really helpful that we started a joint bank account so um, we were engaged for a little over a year, so that account had been accumulating money from us for about two years. So, yeah, and now now we have that account together, and 
um, he closed his his um he closed his own account and I will be closing mine soon once I get all my direct deposit stuff changed because I'm so frustrated with that bank right now, but that's besides the point. So um yeah, we opened a joint bank account to specifically pay for wedding funds and just future stuff. Also with money and how we afforded a wedding, um, because we knew that we would be paying for things on our own, we kind of talked about what we would want to spend, what we were comfortable spending. Um, we set our budget and then we kind of broke it down like what took precedence over other things, what we would rather splurge on. And like there were things like the cake and the flowers that I just didn't want to spend a whole lot of money on because honestly I'm not a cake person and I know people want to eat cake at weddings it's like a thing obviously but I just could not justify spending thousands of dollars on a wedding cake that would be eaten half of it would be thrown away because people take five bites and then they're done like I just couldn't justify that it was craziness to me um same with flowers they're gonna die like yeah they're pretty in the pictures and they're pretty sitting around but I didn't want like crazy flower centerpieces nothing like that um we used like Stefan's mom's um flowers like literally took flower pots from her house and put them um at the end of our aisle in these um dairy jugs what are they called those big milk can things um literally sat them in them as part of our decorations because it's like what's the point it was pretty no one really cares at least I don't care and if I don't care it's my own wedding so you shouldn't care so um yeah we knew we wanted to have a really good photographer pictures are something that lasts forever um so we splurged on our photographer that was one of our big expenses um the tent obviously was a big expense and then the caterer was the biggest expense but also like with that we straight up told our caterer that you know we're paying for most of the wedding on our own we can't afford some crazy you know prime rib and lobster dinner um and so she was really willing to work with us about the buffet and everything and we were gonna get like these nicer plates that had like gold rim they were supposed to like look like china but they were plastic and our caterer was like, honestly, it's not worth it. Like, people are going to throw it away anyway. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it'll look pretty for the five seconds that they're using it, but is it really worth all that extra money? And so she was great, and, yeah, we ended up just doing the clear plastic plates, which some people might have been like, oh, my gosh, who cares? Who cares? I'm not about to spend an extra $2 on some plate just so it looks a little prettier when you're eating your food. Sorry, but no. So, um, yeah, just little things like you gotta, it's easy to like get carried away with wedding planning. Like you want everything to be perfect. You want everyone to be wowed. You want everything to be, you know, so fancy and all this stuff. You only do it one time, but you only do it one time. You only do it one time, but that doesn't mean you have to be a complete witch about everything. Like you gotta just kind of bring your head down and realize that there are expenses in the world that are not necessary. So, yeah, we kind of, you got to, you definitely, with wedding planning, got to just make your limit for things, decide what you're going to spend where, and the second you start, like, going above your limit, it gets out of control, and it will be way too stressful and a lot more hard to figure out if you have the money, you know, stuff like that, yada, yada. Okay, continuing on with the house, um, since we did get married, we honestly didn't even know we would be buying a house until probably, let's see, probably like the very end of June, beginning of July. We still didn't know where we were going to live. Um, Stefan got a job. He started working, um... He started his job July 1st, I think, and so, something like that. And so he had two weeks before that, um, before he started, that he knew he had the job. So then we at least knew where we were going to be located. Um, that was really scary and stressful, is not even knowing where we were going to live, but, um, like, location-wise. And then we started looking for apartments, and it just, 
apartments, if I could give you any advice in the world, if you can afford a down payment, please don't get an apartment because at least here, it's just a waste of money. The, our mortgage is less than some apartments that we were looking at for way less space and it's not even yours. You can't even paint the freaking walls. And, um, I mean, just the biggest thing with buying a house is being able to afford the down payment. Um, and then there's certain loans for first time home buyers where you don't have to have a down payment, but then you have to pay mortgage insurance. Um, so it's always really good to ha try to have a down payment. Um, it depends on what, you know, house you're buying as far as how much, uh, what house you're buying and how big of a loan you need, um, as far as how big your down payment needs to be. Um, and then like our, the sellers of our house did not pay for closing costs so that so then we had to pay for closing costs also, which is a big chunk of money too. Um, it wasn't quite as big as they estimated it would be, so we had a lot of money, not a lot of money, but we had money left over that we um, did not think that we would have, so that was nice. But um, yeah, the down payment and the closing costs are what you really have to be able to afford up front. And then um, like our first mortgage payment didn't start, I don't think, until a month after. Um, same with all the bills. I think it was the month after that they all kicked in. So like Stephen and I are paying a certain amount monthly, but we're paying into something that we own. So, um, like I have friends right now that are in the situation where they're in apartments and they want to try to buy a house, but they can't afford a down payment because their money constantly goes into rent and it's not going towards something that's their own. It's not, you know, it's just being thrown away constantly. So... I don't know. I just think it's super smart if you can afford a down payment, do that. If you have to, you know, live with your parents a little longer so that you can afford a down payment, do that. Just once you get yourself into an apartment, it's going to be harder to save money because, again, you're dropping so much monthly on something that's not even yours and you're not able to save. So it's just a sticky situation. We did have a registry, so we were blessed with a lot of gifts from people. Um, for my bridal shower and then also for the wedding and then um, you know people gave us money too to help us out with our new lives together and so I mean weddings you are gonna get a decent amount of money and so that could help you also with the down payment I'm not saying like go rush out and get married just so you can afford a house but um, that is something to keep in mind I know in our society now it's like totally normal for a uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, fiance, whatever to go out and buy a house together and live together before they're married. Um, but I just want to get this out there that if you do get married beforehand, people are going to be very, very open to giving you money and helping you out. And I think since Stefan and I um, really were starting out on our own as a married couple for the first time, um, we had a lot of needs as far as, you know, just kitchen things, just everything. People were very, 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 very willing to help us out. And, um, we were very blessed with family and friends that we have. So, um, that's just something to keep in mind too. If, you know, you're thinking of moving in with your boyfriend, um, it'll be probably a bigger struggle because like we have pots and pans that we would have never been able to afford um and again like you might not need the top of the line stuff but still pots and pans even the cheap ones are expensive um we didn't pick like super expensive pots and pans and appliances and stuff so but it adds up like the stuff you need in your kitchen dang like it is a lot of money to stock your kitchen not even with groceries just like things you need like serving spoons and spatulas and this and that it like never ends so um it'll be a lot harder for you if you do that before you're getting married unless you know you guys are able to afford it then fine but if you're able to afford it I don't know why you'd be watching this video so yeah Stefan does, I forgot to mention this, Stefan did get a job, well I guess I did say he got a job, but he got a salary job, um, so he's making a decent amount of money, so like, our monthly payments aren't a problem, we don't have to tap into savings to pay for, um, you know, our monthly 
bills and stuff, which is really nice. When we bought our house, the stove was the only thing that was included. So, um, like, we needed a fridge, a washer and dryer, which we still don't have hooked up, but we're working on that. And it doesn't have a dishwasher, but um, eventually we would like to put one. We needed a fridge and stuff like that. And, you know, at first when we were planning our registry, we were like, stainless steel, we're going to have, you know, stainless steel fridge, blah, 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 blah. And then when we bought our house, it's like, <laughs> I'm not spending that much more just so I can have stainless steel. Like, yeah, stainless steel looks good, but I'm doing the whole shabby chic deal with my house. Like, I like everything to look kind of handmade. So, um, I've been looking at, like, shabby chic home decor and stuff like that. And white fridges and white stoves and white microwaves and white dishwashers are perfectly shabby chic. They look awesome in a shabby chic kitchen. And I don't need stainless steel. I'm not the queen of Shiba. I don't need granite countertops. I don't need real wood floors. Like, no. If it's not in the house, like, fine. We can work on it in the future to make it what we want. But I don't need, like, top-of-the-line stuff right now. So, um, basically, what I'm getting at is keep your ears open um, to buy used appliances. I mean, maybe you can find cheap used stainless steel. Stainless steel is what you want. But, um... Stefan's mom worked with someone who was redoing their kitchen to stainless steel and were getting rid of their white appliances and they had a white fridge and so we got our fridge for like a hundred dollars I think it was either a hundred or a hundred fifty I can't remember I think a hundred dollars so yeah we have a fridge is it suitable for the Queen of England probably not but is it suitable for Stefan and I yes if it's our groceries we don't need some fancy schmancy refrigerator, refrigerator. So, yeah, I mean, if we had gone out and bought a new stainless steel fridge, first of all, we probably wouldn't have been able to afford it at that point in time. Second of all, I'd be kicking myself in the head right now for spending money on something that is not necessary at this point in our lives. I mean, we're blessed enough to have a house like not many people our age are able to afford a house and able to, you know, have some of the things that we have. So, no, I'm not going to take what I have for granted. Um, and then with our wash and dryer, same thing. Stefan's mom works with um, someone that was moving and their new home had to have stackables, so they had to buy a stackable wash and dryer, so they were selling their um, old washer and dryer and they're white and they're simple but they're fine they're perfect actually well I haven't used them yet so hopefully they work but um, we got those for a hundred dollars combined like literally each one was fifty dollars so pff, I don't need some new front loading I don't even know ultra spin cycle stuff when I can get perfectly fine wash and dryer for a hundred dollars Basically, the only furniture that we bought new was our couch right here behind me and our love seat, which matches it over there, that way. Um, we got those at Big Lots, both on sale. Our couch was $300, I think, and our love seat was like $240 for bargain shoppers. This couch is comfortable, okay? Big Lots furniture, and it looks good. I like the color. It's not like too golden brown and it's... I don't know. I like it. So, I got my couch and love seat for under $600. Can't complain about that. Um, a lot of our like other furniture are hand-me-downs. Like our, our end tables are Stephen's old nightstands that we painted the bottom of to make them fit. Um, our coffee table was a hand-me-down that we refinished. Our dining room table, we bought it um, Goodwill and stripped it down, restained it, painted it. Um, yeah. We have an armoire over here that Stefan's mom and dad got us for an early Christmas present. Um, and again, like, I think they're so willing to help us out and, like, so excited to help us furnish our house and stuff like that because they're proud of us um, for doing 
things the way that we did and for getting married before moving in together and for not having a child before we're married. <laughs> I think they're really proud of both of us, um, both my parents and his parents. And so, um, you know, it's kind of scary sometimes to think about all that we have to pay for and afford and stuff like that. And it can kind of get overwhelming, but we are not struggling so far. Knock on wood. And I know that if we ever were truly struggling, um, Stefan's parents or my parents would be willing to help us out all that they could because, again, they are proud of us and they know that if we were struggling, it was because we were really struggling, not because we were making um, poor decisions with our lives. So, yeah, it's good to know that we have that kind of support from our parents and very, very, very lucky. So, yeah, I think that that's it as far as this video goes. I can't really think of anything else that we did differently. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it might have helped you out with, you know, thinking about things for your future. Um, so, yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you in my next one. Bye, everyone.